Hello, listeners. Welcome to another episode of the Die by the Sword podcast. Uh, we're really excited to have you here listening to us. Before we get started, as always, want to give a shout out to the guys over at Midnight Syndicate for letting us use their wonderful music. Give them a listen at www.midnightsyndicate.com. And also a big shout out to Sword Coast Soundscapes for the wonderful sound effects. Check them out at youtube.com slash Sword Coast Soundscapes. That's enough yammering for me. Let's get on to the episode. By the time this episode airs, it will have already been Fat Tuesday, and I'm just now recovering from being drunk. (laughs) I ate a lot of potatoes. I had... Potatoes? Yeah. Get that starch out of the the kitchen. Mm. What was that thing that Father Crary always said? Have a a grim grim Lent. Lent. Have a grim Lent. So I hope (laughs) all of our audience is having a grim Lent right now. (laughs) It's your first Monday in Lent. It's just a double whammy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a Monday and it's Lent. Monday and it's Lent. Monday and Monday. <laughs> Ooh, that's Monday, good. Monday. Yeah, I uh, I always forget to celebrate Fat Tuesday. Like, I actually really like the season of Lent, and so I'm not like jumping over my head excited for Ash Wednesday. But I forget Fat Tuesday always happens the day before. <laughs> I think it's, <laughs> I think it's because we're in choir and we always have a big anthem on Ash Wednesday, mm-hmm. so we're just. Like, okay, Ash Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. We just don't need to think about it. Yeah, we're just yeah. preparing. Forget about the party beforehand. Yeah. It makes um, sense. Yeah. I mean, growing up Catholic, I never celebrated Fat Tuesday. Uh, Ash Wednesday, absolutely, you have to go yeah. to church. I don't remember ever celebrating Fat Tuesday. Yeah. But I did celebrate the Saturday before at a Mardi Gras party. Heck yeah. There you go. Well, Saturday's the day to do it, unlike yeah. Tuesday for some reason. We had, yeah. some, we had some king's cake, which- uh, It was very sweet. It was very cinnamony. Had- King cake had uh, seafood uh, gumbo. Um, had some. <laughs> Philip and I both cringed. <laughs> and we had this big old um, like container of hurricanes that we drank that had two full bottles of rum in it. Well, that sounds fun. Mm. It was a lot of rum. The so. drink, not like a, a container that looked like a hurricane glass, the, the, like the, a really big hurricane glass. No, the the drink hurricane. It was like a one of those you know five gallon. Tubs. Tub kind of cool. pitcher things that was filled. Do you know what that reminds we, me of? We emptied that. <laughs> Do you know what that reminds me of? This is, was it your birthday last year? Um, yeah. Yeah. No. Year before. I don't remember. Yeah. Yeah. It was two years ago. So it was your birthday two years ago. You All you wanted to do was play Pathfinder. Mm-hmm. and you Which is the correct choice. Agreed. Obviously. But uh, this is the coolest idea ever. You made two different punches. Uh, a red one and a blue one, and we were a lot. What? Well, I don't remember the rules, but it's like I do. Could, it was, okay, what were the rules? Yeah, <laughs> good. The rules were: if you drink from the red punch, then you can recover one d eight hit points. Mm-hmm. Right. And if you drink from the blue punch, you can recover one spell slot. I think it was like per drink taken, so you had to take two drinks for a uh, level two spell slot. Yes, it so was you, so fun. So you, but we were only level two, so it didn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> If you wanted those higher level spells, you got drunk faster. Yeah. It was and, and that was just fun. his rule was there's no limit to how much you can do it except how much alcohol you can tolerate. And, exactly. And I'm pretty sure it was during a like an intense dungeon crawl. Like I remember a, there were yeah, no, it a lot yeah, of that this a was, lot of the red juice was drank. Yeah. <laughs> this was in the dungeon for Rune the first book of Rune Lords. Yeah. So and, yeah. and the fun part was I let because it was my birthday, I let the monsters be able to do the same thing. <sighs> So I could heal the monsters by taking those potions. It was so and it, fun. It took like a standard action to go do whatever it was, whichever <laughs> shot you wanted. Yeah. And then the GM was getting drunk. So yeah. Which is always a good sign. And it was a lot of fun. Yeah. That was the, that was really good. I think I would definitely do that again for, I recommend that for Pathfinder. That, that was a really events. good party game. Yeah. Party event. Speaking of Fat Tuesday, uh, at the office, we did a baby, little baby Fat Tuesday thing. They were just like little masks and beads and stuff. And somebody gave me, uh, what is it? A necklace of beads? What do yeah. you call it? Beads. It's Somebody, a necklace. Yeah. <laughs> it's Someone a necklace. gave you a necklace. I just didn't know if there's a specific term for I it. I don't know if there is. Yeah, and I, I Mardi Gras beads. I yeah. was I was walking home and I was like, oh no, I'm still wearing this. I forgot. Where are they? Uh, I don't know. I, I can try to find them. I have a box of, <laughs> I have a box of Mardi Gras beads. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't earn them. <laughs> I was gonna ask, did you earn those beads? No, no. <laughs> well, I, got... I earned mine. <laughs> well, oh. did your you? Boobs. Well, all did right, you? Then. <laughs> Yep. Taking your shirt off at work. I'm not answering that question. <laughs> it was a statement. Speaking of showing your boobs, I think I remember Roderick saying something about that in the last episode. Yes. You're going to be the horse. 
on the cart. That was the trade off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't Wait. think there was a verbal agreement of that. <laughs> Just you assumed. The horse is going to show its boobs? What's no, happening? Roderick was the horse. Oh. It doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so where were we? Uh, I remember. I remember we leveled up. You did, did level up. Mm-hmm. You did level up. I'm so excited. Uh, uh, you had started making your way back to the courthouse uh, to turn in the evidence that you had uh, with the clerk. Yeah, and I think we got there and turned in the evidence, but we hadn't really talked yes. to anybody. Yeah. Uh, but before we get into all of that, let's go over some level up stuff. I feel like um, there are some hit points that need to be rolled. Yep. You know it. All righty. So who wants to start? Who's Me. ready to start? Me. Noel's ready. Oh, Noel. All right. Uh, D8. D8. One. Seven. All right. And I took toughness as my feat for this level. So that gave me five extra, and then I took my favored class bonus. So that's one more. So seven plus six. Thirteen? Yes. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I did it. Yay, math. So any other cool and exciting fun um, tidbits for your level? Yes. Well, yes, actually. I was, I was thinking. Um, so I can now cast third level spells. You know, just that old yawner, third level spells. Third level spell. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, you know, I, I, I forget this every time I play a cleric, but you start getting into the third level, like these mid-range spells. There's some very useful ones, but they're very scenario specific. And I was just looking at the list, and a lot of them are spells that I don't think Vivian, or I know that Vivian would never cast, like summoning a bearded devil. <laughs> and don't think that's her. No, items like that. Uh, causing an outsider to do your will by causing pain. So it's like, okay, well, I'm not going to do that. Mm. My other cleric I played would, yeah. but not... What kind of cleric does that to people? Evil uh, ones. An evil cleric. Or evil neutral. Cl- or neutral, yeah. So uh, anything else fun with... Yes. So, so yeah. Uh, third level spell. Pretty excited about that. I'll have to think about what which one she's going to pick the next day. Because you, we we talked about this off mic. Because we've leveled up in the middle of the day, we will not have access to our new spells until we sleep. Correct. Okay. And your maximum hit points have gone up, but you do not automatically heal up to those maximum hit points. But if you take healing, you can heal up to the the new maximum. Okay. If you have any spell, like supernatural abilities, things like that, which I believe your channels are considered supernatural abilities, mm-hmm. you do have access to those. Perfect. Speaking of my channels, I now roll 3d6. Ooh. Mm-mm-mm. Very excited some about that. nice healing there with some channels. Yes, I'm very excited about that. It's oh, it's the most exciting part about being a cleric is that number going up because everything else is pretty just, just numbers on a page. And truly, the, the channel ability is one of the best things from a cleric, I think. Because you get to heal multiple people at one time, or you can damage multiple undead foes at one time. And I was looking up, and I was really tempted this level to take. There's different feats you can take that will affect your channels to to like give people extra saves against diseases and doing more damage when you cast in, things like that. Mm. I've resisted for this level. I decided I really wanted to get my HP up, and there's one that I'm kind of saving out for once I have a higher channel count, okay. channel die. Yeah, and channeling's so great because a lot of times when you're looking at it, you see the smaller number, you know, because compared to a spell slot, which is, you know, going to be 3d8 plus 5, just the channel is 3d6. So it seems smaller, but it, you're healing everyone mm-hmm. in 3d6 at, at the same time for one action. So it's really potent. Yep. And it can, if you have those channels available and you can heal everybody, it saves your other spells for yeah. mm-hmm. other things you might need later. Exactly. It's great against Hordes of Undead, the crowd control aspect mm-hmm. of it. I do like mm-hmm. the modifications they make in 2nd Edition, though, where you can heal and harm at the same time. Like yeah. Heal humans and harm undead at the same time. You have to go a few deep in the feet tree to do that in 1st Edition. Mm-hmm. But it's cool if you can get there. So, oh, yeah. So if I did my math right, my t- maximum HP is now 52. 52. Is that a special number for anything? Some cards. Yeah. Ooh. 52 pickup. Philip, right on top of it. He knew. Right at the top of his head. I was looking at cards. <laughs> I found I found my hero cards. <laughs> yeah, they're found. Where were they? I don't know. Hey, they're found, and one of them is called the Lost. <laughs> <laughs> and my shaken threshold's now gone up to twenty six, which yeah. I wrote forty six at first, and I was like, "That's not right. That, that's way not right." <laughs> so moving on to me, I guess I'm okay. the next one in the in the rotation. There we go. Uh, my hit die is also a D eight. If you're ready to roll off, Gary, I suppose so. Uh, Four. Four. <laughs> you both rolled a four? Both rolled a four. Both rolled a four, so... That means maximum. 
Yeah, you mean, that means you add them together mm-hmm. if you roll the same thing. Yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> that brings Roderick's hit points up to 49. Ha ha, I have more. I think you had more before. Yeah, but I still have more. <laughs> mm-hmm. I continue to be superior in hit points. He He's kind of a frontliner, but he's kind of weak. He's a magic user. Mm-hmm. Uh, so any exciting, fun things for the Magus this round? I'm glad you asked. Um, and I remember telling you this off mic, Gary, but every level after third is going to be big, very big for Roderick. So there's not going to be a boring level from here <laughs> on out. As long as Roderick survives, every level is going to be exciting. And this one, for starters, last level, he took the heal hex. Mm-hmm. Well, now at level five, that upgrades from mimicking cure light wounds to mimicking cure moderate wounds. Oh, very so he nice. can now heal for 2d8 plus his hex crafter level, which is five. So 2d8 plus five is his healing for that hex. Wow, nice. that's awesome. He also got a bonus feat as a magus, which he took intensify spell, which isn't going to do anything this level, but as a metamagic feat, any spell that caps, like, um, for example, burning hands, it's 1d4 per level, caps at five. Mm-hmm. If you prepare it with this metamagic feat, it increases by five. So you can get it up to 10 D4, for b- but it's only one per level. It doesn't It doesn't automatically increase, but it allows it to continue increasing with your level beyond the cap. Mm-hmm. So you have to apply it to a specific spell? No, you just have to prepare it with that spell. Oh, okay. So I can prepare regular burning hands or I can prepare intensified burning hands, which removes the cap or at least increases it by five. So, nice. and it'll only work up to the level... Five higher than the previous cap. No, <laughs> up, to like, my, up to my caster level. It, like yes. if he's level seven, it will. You can only get it to level like yes, seven. Seven. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, fireball caps at ten, but with this, I can prepare it as one slot higher and make it up to fifteen. So, like today, you could cast it on one spell, and it would it would do it up to level five. And if you did it on another spell, it would still do it up to level five. Well, tomorrow yeah. after he sleeps. Yeah. I I. Meta meta magic feats are so cool, and I don't ever take them because I just they hurt my head. Me too, so much. Well, and it's also very good for a magus because the magus is stuck with the lower level spell slots for longer than a full caster because they're only a two thirds caster. Mm -hmm. So my my spell level progression is slower, so it allows me to get more use out of the lower level spells this way. That makes sense. It Mm -hmm. does make sense. Well, and that's what I was thinking. I want to interrupt real quick when you were talking about the hex crafter thing. I was thinking how cool that is that it changes from a cure light to a cure moderate because cure light is another one that caps at level five. Yep. And the fact that it just changes it to a different spell is very cool. Mm-hmm. So I, that's, I wish my cure light wounds did that <laughs> if, <laughs> if I was a bard or something. Jealous. Mm-hmm. So that's not the most interesting thing that Roderick got this level though. So at level five, he gets a regular feat and as a regular feat, he can take extra arcana. And as a hex crafter, he can take a witch hex as an arcana. <laughs> so, through that complicated chain, he has taken the flight hex oh. at level five. Nice. We can fly together. <laughs> yeah. So, there's another hex I was thinking about, but I decided to go with this one again for story reasons, because he's been watching Renly fly around. I can show you the world. What's the <laughs> Superman in Lois Lane? Yeah. So, for those not familiar with the flight hex, um, at level one, two, three, I think... It just acts as Featherfall and gives you a bonus to your swim check. At level three to four, it gives you the ability to levitate as the spell levitate. But starting at level five, it acts as the flight spell, which allows you to fly at a speed of 60 miles. Uh, 60 miles? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> wow. It allows you to fly at a speed of... <laughs> Boy, your hair would be in the breeze with that, wouldn't it? Face pushback. <laughs> Dog it's actually faster wind. than that. It's um, It actually allows you to fly at, the, at a speed of 60 feet per round for one minute per level. Mm-hmm. I don't even want to think I was going to say, let's that. do the math now. Do the math at home, audience. Oh, so, I won't. Yeah, so inspired by Renly flying around, he's like, hey, I can do that. And he did. <laughs> Quit copying me. <laughs> Boy, I can see this now. I can I can see face vertical face plants, you know. <laughs> I will not be rolling any checks. I was gonna do like like um you know the wrestlers that jump off the of ladders yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Did you read about this is a sidebar? Did you read about this guy was a the, he was a rocketeer that died. Yeah, he was yeah. one of the biggest proponents for flat Earth. He was trying to build a rocket too. I oh, saw the video that of that. Yeah. I saw the video. He was of a flat that. earther. He was a yeah. flat earther. Oh wow! And the I didn't know that the really important part of a homemade rocket, which is in fact the parachute part, it fell off. It fell off. <gasps> yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, I, yeah. I, watched, I watched the video. He, of that he launch. plummeted. Uh, he plummeted pretty, pretty effectively. Here's a video of it. Gravity 
because he works. He, he was filming it for TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah for I mean, like the Discovery Channel. Yeah, yeah. But, or Science Channel. I mean, seriously, though, yeah, because flat that's Earth so or, scientific, <laughs> flat Earth or not, it's still gravity. Like yeah. that still happens. Was, the jury's out with gravity with those guys too. I'm pretty sure. Bringing it back around I to, don't disagree to with Fat you. Tuesday slash religion, <laughs> I've had a I've, one of the priests at our church. Um, I was talking to him one time, and it was some social event, and he was saying how, <laughs> to be clear, he does not believe in flat Earth theory, but he's fascinated by it, and like it's that's what he like he he reads he reads up on flat Earth theory in his spare time. Yeah, and so he's got all the the arguments in his head and, and if you talk through if you try to like talk through him it's like well what about this and he's like well you see <laughs> <laughs> one of the most fascinating podcasts that i've listened to was uh oh no ross and carrie mm-hmm. when they uh dove into uh, mm-hmm. flat, earth flat earth stuff, stuff. and they even interview i mean the flat earthers will absolutely interview with you yeah, yeah. man because they yeah they're like libertarians. <laughs> <Talk to anybody. laughs> I, I consider there's a lot of similarities. When I was a uh, when I was a young and and first was doing uh, w- watching the evolution of uh, fantasy war games and from from the Napoleonic Wars that would get staged. I'm telling you, you want to you want to see boring Philip? Oh my God, armies armies that they spent years painting. So you're just describing moving, Warhammer. <laughs> moving really, really Yeah, but they're not even, like, you're not making up the war. You're just recreating another war. You're recreating another war. It's like it's the same war every time. I wonder who won this time. Yeah, You can't actually change too much in anything they're doing. And I'm telling you, when you're talking about each guy has a thousand pieces that rep- each and each piece represents some multiplier, right? And they're all on little wooden things and they have to, with their rulers and their measuring sticks and stuff. So at the same time, I was also participating in the libertarian movement and the establishment of the libertarian party. It's like, it's the same people. <laughs> it's like the same guy with the light up suit and stuff would show up at both things. <laughs> Oh. Okay. Well, there's also Vermin Supreme with his boot on his head. Oh, Vermin <laughs> Supreme. You know, the I, I have one more sidebar from that. Uh, I used to take belly dancing lessons, and I'm actually starting those back up again soon. Yay! But uh, Opa. we often, w- uh, my, my studio performs at Scarborough Fair mm-hmm. every year, which is our local Renaissance festival. And so one year I was, I was making the rounds and working at the festival – Doing my belly dancing. Belly dancers are the best costumes to wear there because they're not a lot of clothing. So it's like I'm so. It, it's always so hot. Yeah, it's like I feel so great. I mean, you don't die of heat exhaustion like I almost did when I was in a wedding there in the rose garden. Exactly. And we were wearing all black medieval garb. Ugh. Exactly. Yeah. You None should see the-, the costume I wear and like the the forty pounds of leather. Yeah. The, yeah. My my. Outfit yeah. looked a lot like yours. <laughs> so, enough. so I worked in. You know, it's it's different when you work at the festival. You start to you start to recognize the people that are there every day. The 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 friends of the fair, people that are there every single day, and you know, you get to learn the the, the booth sellers. You get to become really familiar with all the the merchants and vendors. So then, after Scarborough Fair, we then have the Scottish Highland Festival, and I went to go see the Scottish Highland Festival. And guess what? I was running into all the same people, which yeah, of course letters. makes sense. But it's like, no, I was seeing like the exact same people, and that was kind of when I was like, you know what? I don't want to go further into this. Uh, <laughs> this <laughs> I've, I've reached. Crew. I've reached my my limit. <laughs> you, you probably see them at the Irish Festival. Too. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I saw the same people down here. When I moved here from Chicago, up there, you go to King Richard's Fair in uh, Wisconsin. I can't remember. We had the same performers. Same performer. Don Juan and Miguel. Don Juan and Miguel. That's where I met them, and they're still performing at, uh, at that. Oh, good times, good times. It was still a funny show. Mm-hmm. It is. They haven't changed a word. <laughs> <laughs> it's like watching the same Christmas movie every yeah, year. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, the next time we do a family thing, there's a uh, Warhammer shop at Main Street Grapevine that I'm going to have to take you to. You'll probably meet some of your libertarian friends. <laughs> They're, it's where they're holding the caucus. It's where they're holding the caucus. Well. <laughs> I, never have I been so disappointed, you know, because it's like we did a lot of stuff and they got too distracted with their own belly buttons, you know. <laughs> As philosophers tend to do. As philosophers yeah. tend to do. Too. Speaking of which, did you level up, Philip? We all should have. Yeah. So, well, isn't, so. it t- isn't it time for you to roll I your hit die? I think it's time for you to roll your hit die. 
Which is... A D8. D8. Oh, so... Not only is an OB, is a D10. Well, what did you level up in? Because you're multi-class, right? Oh, yes, I am, but I'm keeping it at Scald. Yeah, I was going to say, that's an important push for you. I thought you said you were going to keep it secret. It's like, no, I want to know. Three. Oh, God. What'd you roll? One. Oh, oh no. no. Take the three. <laughs> I'm gonna. Oh. Still squishy. Yeah. But, I mean, my hit point, I mean, it's not that bad. It's still bad, but it's not <laughs> that bad. Yeah, it is. Oh, let me see. So you should probably kill this character. Make that <laughs> three, and then yeah. So that means that I top out at forty-seven, hmm. and that is with my feet because I took the same feet Noel did. Toughness, toughness. So, toughness. so yes. that means everyone at the table has toughness. There's a lot of peer pressure going on at this table. Mm-hmm. We're just it's tough. Fear of death. That's what it is. It's not. Peer yeah. pressure, it's fear pressure. Well, guess what? I took <laughs> yes, toughness, I like too. No, no, you didn't. <laughs> Did you fear- seriously add toughness to all your monsters? <laughs> yeah. Obviously. Fear pressure, I like that, Philip. I fear wanna, pressure, that's I want that to yeah. get recognition. Um. So, okay, so my new feat, toughness. So 47 is only two points below Roderick, so. Yeah, not that bad. Well, you have a D6 level in there, too. Yes, that just means I roll I like garbage. <laughs> I do have a D6 in there. Um, and then uh, Scald at level four, which I am, even though we're all level five, mm-hmm. uh, gets Uncanny Dodge. Uh-huh. Oh, that's so fun. I get to retain my dex bonus to AC when I'm flat-footed. Yay. Excellent. That will help. That will help. more specifically defined as you can't get caught flat-footed. Right. Exactly. So, nice. in your face. <laughs> We already had this with the last character too, face. so this that's shouldn't be that's true. I mean, I, they're brothers, so I, yeah, I, I can still hit you. <laughs> it runs in the family. Yes. Um, and then uh, in skill levels, I mean, I just took normal skill stuff, but I, I decided to take up a, a point in uh, linguistics because every time I take a point in li- linguistics, I get more languages. Oh yeah, I also did put a point in spellcraft so I can not cheat when I roll that now. Oh, okay. That- that's nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I forgot. Uh, skills were an important uh, thing for Roderick this level, and I completely forgot it. Since he has access to the library now, I actually took a point in knowledge nature, lo- knowledge local, and knowledge history because I keep not being able to roll those, and that's annoying. <laughs> so, <laughs> now that I have a story reason to justify taking those ranks, I did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've taken. S- I have seven languages now that I can speak. That's three more than Roderick. I love taking linguistics points in linguistics and getting languages. I never use any of them, but I just love having them. I just love the idea of playing a character that can speak all these different languages. Mm-hmm. I can speak to volcanic creatures on the different plane. Can <laughs> you? <laughs> the most obscure one that, that Renly has is ancient or Osur- Suryanin. Or Syriani. Or Syriani. On Sincerity. Well, I I speak an unknown language. <laughs> so, quite the so controversy. F- for listeners at home, my my mother is the best note taker ever on her sheets, and so she was she was as she said so she she's already leveled up, but she was transcribing over her sheet, and we just kept coming across some various questionable notes. <laughs> what what did I mean by this? <laughs> and what was it, what was the language one? P P W P slash W. And none of us with knows. a line drawn to common. It's somehow related right. to common, and none of us were able to find out what PW yeah, you means. I have no out. idea. It's P slash W? Yeah, that's what I've got, P slash W. I Pass- mean, that usually means password. Yeah, password. But so the, the pass- not meaningful in this context. The password to your ethereal mail is in common. Oh, that's what it means. No, okay. that's not right. Yeah, she doesn't. She doesn't have email. <laughs> she, I don't have ether. She can't even text. Zenobia. That not, would, that, Zenobia, that would, not for the record, Zenobia, not my mother. My that mother would be is Zenobia's very good. husband. <laughs> Zenobia would figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> if nothing else, just to spite her husband. <laughs> just knowing, it's like hmm. so. All is right. it to me? Are you done? I'm all done. <laughs> so <aggressive. laughs> All right. She's getting into character. So it's a yes. D10 for Zenobia. Yes, it's a D10. Two, eight, uh, eight. Yes. Take the eight. So that as if you needed me to tell you that. So with my modifiers, that takes me to sixty-one hit points. That's Mm -hmm. very nice. Nice. Yes. That is twelve higher than Roderick. Well, you know what that means? It means Gary's going to send out monsters that have like a hundred hit points. (laughs) Well, eventually, yeah. You know. yeah. No, well, I, I mean, mean this time. <laughs> this I mean, episode. You've already fought things that have like 80 something hit points. You just I know, add- and we haven't liked it. We've been low level. We've been nearly, <laughs> sw- nearly squished. See, have it, sympathy it, for us. At least when I play, I like the I like the fights where 
they're, things are easy to hit. They just have a ton of hit points. Yeah. So I feel like I'm doing something, but the fight can still yeah, take a while. That's why I really like of fun. oozes at low levels because oozes have like I, AC I six. Hate, I did not. I, I did not oozes. enjoy fighting the ooze. I must say. I well, you almost oozes. died yes. with the ooze. Yes, I did not enjoy that. <laughs> well, I enjoy them because you can hit them. <laughs> so squishy. Well, I I do think it's important for the. Uh, for the GM to be playing characters that have high hit points. Cause I don't think there's any sadder face. Then when you just annihilate, then you your just GM's annihilate the monster. monster. And y'all, y'all you have don't done even that. make it, yeah. you don't even make it, they don't even make it through a round. Yeah. yeah it's like, oh, and it's the big, sad. big boss. I can yeah. sympathize with Gary cause I've done a lot of GMing too. And yeah. there's nothing, and it's not like you're trying to kill your characters. Be like, Ooh man, this, this creature can do a lot of fun things and yeah. it's going to yeah. be really cool. You, and then just, <laughs> it's dead. You, you really get into, get into like that character and what they can do. And you've done all this research and preparing mm-hmm. and ready to go for it. And they die in one round. Yeah. yeah. Learn some yeah. complicated like, um, mechanics. It's a sad face yeah. when that happens. Like when we did Rise of the Rune Lords and I had that were rat that I was really prepared to fight <laughs> with. <laughs> and Alex <laughs> obliterated Dominated. it in one turn. It was really impressive. One turn. Not even a full <gasps> round went by. It was one turn. <laughs> to be and fair. He killed it. To be fair, he got a crit on a parry and repost, and then he got a crit on his turn. Yeah. And that's how he killed it in one round. However, we later found out that he was cheating and gave his character seven strength and didn't have the, uh, he had way too much of a load for that strength. He was a min-max. We Uh, made him rebuild his character, but. Min-maxing helps your character basically. Well, let's explain what it is. Be on like God mode for the whole time. Yeah. But it it breaks the game, I feel like. It makes it boring. Min-maxing is when you have like negative charisma and maximum strength. It's like all, you dump all your points into one. The, the one thing that you're really good at. It, it would have the simplistic aspect I like of things. Exactly. Yeah. Like, there's less to remember. Well, and I mean, people complain. I'm really bad. <laughs> people complain about it, but I feel like that's on the GM, that if you have a player that's built a character with a seven charisma, you should punish that character for it. Like, make sure everywhere they go, everyone they talk to well, has a negative opinion of your group because you have the seven yeah. charisma guy who's yeah. just pissing everyone off. Mm-hmm. But this charisma makes you appeal to people. Exactly. So negative yeah. charisma yeah. Yeah. So, has the opposite effect. So if your score is a seven, you've got like a negative, what would that be? Like, like negative two? two? Yeah. Who the hell is this guy? <laughs> yeah. Th- you're going to fail every like diplomacy check possible. And- well, you know what? It makes it too real. I think it's a real problem when you want too much realism in a fantasy game. Yeah. And, and I mean, yeah. a good adventure should be written so that, you know, you need that charisma too. And you need the dexterity every once in a while and that kind of thing. Yeah. Obviously, your characters are going to have certain abilities that you're stronger in that are more suited yeah. to like if you're a frontline fighter you're going to be stronger with with strength if you're a caster you're going to have either higher wisdom or intelligence or charisma based on whatever your modifier is but i think it's better to play a more well-rounded character and it just helps develop the story more i mm-hmm. think yeah well, that's more and that's yeah. what humans are like yeah. you don't have I've met very few people in my life that were one dimensional. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and this is also another thing and we're getting But more than one. <laughs> we're we're zooming more out than zero. We're zooming out to good tabletop RPG just guidelines is have a good relationship with your GM, trust your GM because if you make a character <laughs> <laughs> Trust them to kill you. <laughs> Don't believe him. <laughs> if you want to make, if you make a character that's too powerful, then your GM has to modify every single encounter to account for that to kill you. And then it, ma- it ends up making it not fun for anyone else whose character isn't nearly as powerful. Or if everybody wants to make a super powerful character, then everybody needs to agree on that ahead of time so that everybody knows yeah. we've made a super powerful character so the GM can account account for that as he's preparing the encounters. Right. Doesn't Pathfinder have a a uh, story for that? I think you're thinking of the mythic rules. The mythic rules. Yeah, and that's mm. Wrath of the Righteous. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, yes, was the answer. That's a good title, Wrath of the Righteous. Yeah, so yeah. really, really- I it like just, that alliteration. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. But it's just, it's it's an agreement with your GM of what kind of game you're wanting to play. Because I've ran games before where it's like, hey, we're just going to be kind of loose with the rules, make a fun character. Or we're going to be really tight with the rules, but I'm not going to come too hard at you guys because I want you to make interesting characters. Mm-hmm. So just, you know- have that it's that session zero right like have the agreement with everybody about what you're wanting to do and then you yeah. make characters built around what you want to do yeah that does make me i think. know what i want to do tell us your feet yeah <laughs> Ooh, it's a good one nice segue philip thank you yeah i did get a feat this time and i'm really excited because not much really happens to, for at least to, for slayers at level five i mean other than the fact of awesome strength and stuff mm-hmm. um but I do get another feat, and I'm taking combat reflexes, because I think it fits very much with Zenobia's character. Mm-hmm. And it lets me take uh, up to three attacks of opportunity. It'd be an additional three. 
on top of your base one. So because you have a plus three modifier for right. dexterity, right? So it's an additional right. three, so a total of four. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. And yeah. Um, let's see. I can also make an a- an a- an ass. An, att- an ass out of myself. Yes, do that regularly. I can also make an attack of opportunity while flat footed, which I think oh, is very cool. really huge. And that that's bitten you a that, couple times. Yeah. yeah. You've been really mad about that. It has. I don't like that was I was like, oh man. Because the other thing I was looking for was being able to sleep in my armor, but I think that's a separate talent and it's later. So if I can't do that, then I'm really tired of being caught flat footed. Pisses me off. <laughs> you know, well, I don't it, like it. Uh with you having combat reflexes, being able to take the attack of opportunity. Uh, while flat footed and Renly having uncanny dodge. Right. And he can't be and you caught. You can't be caught flat footed. That means being flat footed isn't really going to affect your party nearly as badly exactly. as it has in the past. Well, exactly. that side of the table. Yeah, it's still going to affect Roderick. We're going to be fine. <laughs> Roderick will just be on death's door the whole the time. Other, but other than that. What else is new? <laughs> yeah. The other cool thing is I get another studied target. Yay. Ah, that's a big one. Yes, it is. And we actually were having a discussion in the rules earlier. Because they're not clear. Yeah, uh, this is uh, um, not surprising, but. The rules aren't exactly clear about this. And here's the question. The question was, so I can I can maintain two study targets at once, mm-hmm. but can I study two targets at once in the same round? And that just doesn't make sense. It's to like me, a, it's a it's a full round action to study one. one. It's a, right. it's a well, full it's round action. action? No, it's, well, not. it's a move action. action. Yeah, move action. It's a move action. But you can't do two of them in a. Single move action. In a single move action. So, Correct. So I could do them sequentially, and then I could maintain two, but I can't study two, two things at the same time. Yeah, right. that, was, that was my reading of it, because it doesn't specifically say that in order to study a second target, it's a separate action, but sort of reading the language, it says, for a study target, you can study an opponent, which implies singular, and then later on it says, after fifth level, you can maintain a study on a second target, but it doesn't say anywhere it doesn't that say you, you can, can do them two at once. Two at once. Yeah, which makes sense to me, because when you're looking at a creature, you're studying it, finding its weak points, another creature may have a similar, but it may not be the exact same spot. And so you say, have to have time to figure that out. And the very word study implies concentration. Right. So what if it was the then? same type? Ooh. I think I think that I thought that was oh. like humans and wolves are attacking you at the same time. What? I would I I don't know. I would sp- <laughs> That doesn't make any sense to well. <laughs> well, okay. So you got like two humans attacking you? Yeah. yeah you asked a poignant question and then completely <laughs> made a mess of it. Or you've got two wolves ta- attacking you? That's what she meant to say. Yeah. Uh, I would say for that one, you would still need the two separate actions to study them. Because they're wearing different clothes. The humans are either wearing different clothes, different armors, well, yeah, or the so wolves. Uh, <laughs> one wolf has lipstick on <laughs> yeah. and a red dress. It has different weak points. Big long eyes. One looks like grandma. That? Did you play that character? I, I, I played the oh, big, yeah, you did. I played the big bad wolf in Shrek the Musical. <laughs> so, so now... They would have different weaknesses because that me. one you would... That one you would go for the heels. Yes. And then the so other. This, this and they're makes, permanently flat footed. This makes me feel a little differently about it though. If I'm uh if I'm being attacked by two things, why wouldn't I be able to study two things? You could, but then you couldn't uh I couldn't do anything else. I couldn't yeah. actually do them any. I, I could study them and then just continue to get hit. Yeah. yeah. It, if by it, both of them instead of maybe just one it, of them. It, it's a move action to study a target. And so you can take two move actions in a round. So you could study both of them in that one round, but you wouldn't be able to do anything else. Because I would say it's one move action per target that you're studying. Just get to level sense. seven and it, uh, it eases it, up. It yeah. eases up, yeah. I think it's still great to be able to have two study targets at once. So It's great. I'm satisfied. So I thought I was ready to go first in this whole thing, but I realized I wasn't. I was just excited to roll my hit die because I also forgot to mention that I, because I now have third level spells, I got two more domain spells. Yes. For the charm domain, I got suggestion. Mm-hmm. And for the fate domain, I got borrow fortune, um, which is, do you know about borrow fortune, Gary? I do not. So it's kind of interesting. It's kind of like a, uh, it's, it's truly a gamble. Um, it's kind of like bit of luck where it's a, I can cast an immediate act as an immediate action. I can cast it on myself and it will, it allows me to roll twice on whatever roll I'm doing and take the better result. But for the next two, I think it's the, I need to look up the wording again. If it's either the next two rounds or the next two D20 rolls, I have to take roll twice and take the lesser results. Oh. So 
And Richard's like, well, that's stupid. You never use that. <laughs> it's a bad spell. Um, but I can think of scenarios where it would be useful if, you know, there's not like an ongoing fortitude save or something like that. Yeah. I wouldn't use it in that sense. So if you're poisoned. So yeah, it's the next two rounds. You must uh, roll two dice each time a d20 roll is called for, keeping the less favorable result. So what you're saying is you're preparing suggestion every single day, right? I don't know. Borrowed Fortune sounds kind of cool. And I don't know if Vivian would want to do suggestion a lot. It's a... I think her suggestion is subliminal. Subliminal? Subliminal. Certainly subtle. Certainly subtle. Yes, it's, yeah. it's, she doesn't even know she's doing it. Well, she could just suggest that they do nice things. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I, I, I think about this. You know, I took the charm domain because she's pretty. <laughs> Like it fit that sense, and it, it's it's within Shaylin's domain uh, cabinet uh, repertoire. Canon, repertoire. It's within her realm, her 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 realm, but her dom- domain, her domain. Yes, but uh, I think it's one of those, and this kind of fits with her whole thing, where she's very pretty but doesn't fully know how to utilize that power. Um, she's got a lot of charm abilities that she doesn't really necessarily feel comfortable utilizing Mm. it's in a way it's kind of like um didn't you have the hero card before where it was you roll a die and then you can just trade it in to Mm re-roll i i I had one of those i think so is the crowns yeah i still have that one uh i feel like it's kind of part of that power Mm -hmm. yeah and it it definitely makes sense because fate is a subdomain of luck Mm mm-hmm Right, um, which is where the bit of luck comes from. So that makes sense. But yeah, I, I don't know how much Vivian's going to be using. I don't know how much how she. I don't. I don't think she knows how she feels yet about manipulating people's emotions. She she likes she likes doing diplomacy stuff, like using her words. And it's you know it's fine if they think she's pretty and that gives her. I don't think she thinks about that. I think about it as the player. I was going to say, does Vivian have really deep philosophical thoughts on free will and self determination? Yes. She's from Almas, dude. Well, she doesn't let on that she thinks about those things. Mm-hmm. We never asked her. Hair flip. <laughs> <laughs> toss, toss. Mm-hmm. So, so now that we're all leveled up. Yeah, what level did you take, Gary? What GM levels do you get? <laughs> I took level five GM, which means all my monsters now have the advanced template. And it means your um, <laughs> your beer tankard gets bigger. It does. <laughs> the amount of whiskey in my drink gets gets more full. It's five shots now instead of... Yep, exactly. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> we, we that was to, a part of my strategy. We need to rethink this house rule. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we're all leveled up. I guess after all this time, jump into the game. We're trying to avoid the trial. I'm nervous. Yeah, the trial. So what's going on, Gary? So, uh, getting my notepad. With this, you've made it back to the courthouse. Uh, you've dropped off the evidence that you had um, with the clerk. You got it there in time. Yay. Yay. Um, I did. Including the living body. <laughs> the living body, i.e. the person. Ew. <laughs> Would you call him a person? I don't know. Um, Just because he doesn't have skin. The skinless. He's, he's, he's a, a skin skin stealer. Skin. I don't know. I guess I have tighter categories than you guys. You're a skinophobe? <laughs> the fey creature. Uh, he's a fey creature? Yeah. Ew. That's why he was knowledge nature. Yeah. Ew. I don't... I, w- I want to think of Faye things as pretty. Anyway. Not all of them. Well, it depends no, on what skin he's wearing. He could be very pretty. Ew, don't you, don't you remember uh, True Blood? Yeah, those fairies were rude. Those fairies were I didn't rude. like those fairies. Um, before we head in, before we totally press play on getting back in the action, mm-hmm. I like pushed an imaginary button in the air for She does that every home. single time. Oh, um, you get rewind. <laughs> oh, oh, crap. The tape's jammed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, healing. How's everyone doing on hit points? Roderick is at full. I don't think he took any damage in the last fight. First time ever? Yeah. Hero card, hero card for that. <laughs> no. I, I'm at full, but as Gary said, we can't reach our max, or we can reach our maximum hit points. Oh, so I should just channel then, because then it can give us all some, a bump higher up. She sure. just wants to use her new channel. A little bit. I have, what am I going to do after this? I have three sets of dice for Vivian, and after, once my uh, channel goes up again, I'll have to do something. You only have three <laughs> sets? Buy more dice? Yeah, I those have. are rookie numbers. Oh, darn. I have three sets. I just have three reserved just for Vivian. I have a set of dice for every character I've ever played. Yeah, that's when you just start borrowing D6s from your other Ooh, sets. Ooh, I rolled a five, a five, and a four. Ooh, what is that, Noel? Uh, 14. <laughs> Yay. That's right, because I was down 15. Oh, look oh at that. yeah, that's nice. Well, from, from your original thing, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. So now I've got 60 hit points. I'm full and the lowest hit points in the party. By two. I still feel bad about it. 
I don't know why. I'm barred. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, you shouldn't be in the front line. It's true. Oh, that leveled me don't up worry, all the way. never is. That leveled He's me up all the way. Floating. So you're super Leveled super you up? Yep. I'm now level 20. Uh, <laughs> and, you're just gonna have to do some quick adjustments to the to the next encounter. Do you know what's and great? And Zonkathon comes from the sky, oh, from an abyss. And, and We've skipped to the end of the podcast. <laughs> I can talk to him. I speak abyssal. Ah. You- <laughs> <laughs> Is that the one you took? No, that's I've, I've already had abyssal. Speak, doesn't he? Don't you speak everything? Only s- I don't remember how many. But seven. seven, seven languages. Um, how many are there? A lot. <laughs> it's more than, more that. than that. Also, <laughs> ten. Also, the funny thing is, if we did do that math, I'm level five plus fourteen is nineteen. So uh, <laughs> you still wouldn't be. I wouldn't 20. be level twenty. <laughs> so why don't you know what PW stands for? If you speak all these languages. <laughs> Seven languages is still no clue as to what PW no is. He doesn't speak Liz. Yeah, I don't. I don't speak lizard folk. Liz doesn't, doesn't speak Liz. Apparently I don't either. <laughs> Liz handwriting. Hey, at least I know it's a P and a W. Sometimes it's like... Are you sure? It could be yeah, an E like, on its it side. Isn't. No, it's not. It's, it's a P slash W. All right. So... I just have no idea what that language could be. I, I just copied been, it been, over onto the new sheet because... Do you have your I'll old remember. sheet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to go back I threw, I threw away... I think I've thrown away the early ones, yeah. though. All right, so... In a fit of stupid. So, thank you for that, Gary. <laughs> I have quite a few of those. Press play. Well, let's fast forward. Oh, shoot. <laughs> no, so the one. trial's over. Okay. <laughs> trial's we, over. Won. we won. Yay! We won. It was great. It just reminded me of Spaceballs. <laughs> <laughs> when they're fast forwarding through the through the movie. The movie. Yeah. <laughs> we are right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's and in uh, Men in Tights when they like pull the script out. Mm-hmm. It's like, wait a minute, I get another shot. <laughs> I think my I think my favorite so you're talking about space balls made me think of Space Jam. And my favorite scene in that <laughs> not the same movie. Not the same. <laughs> not the same movie, but my favorite scene in that was when Elmer Fudd and Yosemite Sam both were like shot the basketball and had like the men in black look going on. It was Oh funny. yeah, yeah, that's a good part. I like that. <laughs> best best movie ever. I've never seen it. What? 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 I've never seen it. Okay, that's we're going to discuss that next intro. <laughs> uh, that's the next intro material yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. You know anyway. was that the was that the one with Brendan Fraser? No, that was no, uh, that, that was, was back in action. This, this was yeah, um, Looney Tunes back in action. Okay. Yeah, that crappy movie. This is the one with Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Yeah. And they've they've ma- they did a remake. Movie. Did they make what? it or are they making it? I, it. Last I, heard I was, it was sorry I had to sit through that one. I was glad when that came out on tape. I never had to watch it again. It's a great movie. I guess. Didn't do it for me. Come on and slam. And welcome to the jam. Jam. Come on and slam. <laughs> jam. If you want a jam. Jam. Uh, that, I have such a good memory. I have such a good memory of watching that. It was really soon after we got back from China and we were in that like budget suites or something. Yeah. And I remember watching it on the hide a bed, which was so cool because it was a couch and a bed and, uh, like eating cocoa puffs and drinking, um, cherry coke separately, not together. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you pour the cherry coke on the cocoa puffs. It was just so yeah, 90s. That's a choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're literally going to play no Pathfinder today. <laughs> we're just going to yeah. keep talking instead. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, but yes, uh, Space Jam 2 has been made to release in 2021, starring LeBron James. That'll yeah, be good. I that part. That'll I be that good. Part. I think he'll do good at that. Mm-hmm. But anyway, back to the, our game. That What's that again? Space Pathfinder. Jam. Pathfinder. Space that's what Jam. we're doing. We're playing okay. Space Jam. Playing Space Jam. So um, we've leveled up. You've leveled up. We're at the courthouse. You're at the courthouse. You've turned in all of your evidence. Um, you've got a little bit of time to meet with uh, Gustav Koppel before going in for day one of the trial. Oh my goodness! On our way up there, Vivian does want to flag down. Uh, there's some like police, some cops wandering mm. around the courthouse. There's probably a sheriff or two. And she and deputy. She wants to flag one down and uh, explain that. Uh, you know, explain that we left some destruction. Not, <laughs> not quite that. It's like we're not going to have time to go investigate that today after the trial because we got to hustle on to the next case. So she wants to see if she can get that area like crime scene taped off. You know, ye old like 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 uh, hemp rope painted <laughs> black and yellow. So um, would they be cool doing that? Ye old caution tape. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah can we could, send the meat wagon out for the bodies? Yeah, you could probably let them know the bodies are out there. Bring out the your wagon. dead. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Cool. All right. So I just wanted to make make note of that. That you know, don't tamper with the crime scene. Not to them. They know to do that. Hopefully, uh, she's going to assume they do. She's all. She's she's trusting. So yeah, you're able to uh, talk to. The sheriff is probably here for this trial. Mm-hmm. Um, he sends a couple of his deputies out to check the the cart outside. 
Um, one of the pieces of evidence is a living uh, creature. The one with no skin. Yes. We didn't do that. That He came that way. <laughs> so, Look, we have a spare suit. Or five. So, so you're yeah. saying there's a flayed man outside? No, he's known as a skin stealer. It's it's an important part of the case. He's evidence, but he's also... He's alive. Yes. So he's... I know, it's very confusing. He's evidence, but he's alive? Put him in a cell. It'll be fine. Would you call... So would you call that the... It's not a... He's... He's the he's the culp, he's the he's culprit? a suspect. He's he do suspect it. suspect. He do it. He's not yet been logged as a suspect, but he is actually the criminal. He's actually the one who did it. So you're saying we should book him? Yes, yes, yes. yes that's the Thanks. word. Yes. yes, thanks, Dano. I I, act, I had to leave Leberstadt University before my legal semester, so I apologize. It's <laughs> understandable. That's a tough semester. I'm also, really glad you had the name tag on too. Yeah. Also, is this the? Uh, <laughs> Is he originally from um, that accent? Are you originally from Morass? Morass? Yeah, that's why I'm really interested in this trial. Oh, there's no bias in this courtroom whatsoever. I'm glad to hear that. Of course not. He's going to get a fair trial, and then he's going to burn. Exactly. Okay. It depends on who you mean by he. The one who did it, right? That's what you mean? Yeah, the beast. Yeah, I mean, mm. kind in quotation marks. Yeah. So skinwalkers are beasts, too. Yes, yes, they are. In this case, yes, friendly. Anyway, I must. I do think we should go talk to Gustav. We are wasting time, and we know how long it takes to get anything out of Gustav. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, where where exactly did you find this flayed person thing? He is not flayed. He is naturally that way, and uh, it's very insensitive. In Vorkstag and Grind's uh, chemworks. That makes sense. He is in fact Vorkstag. Does it? Does it make sense? Have you seen their dog? Oh uh, yes. See, he gets it. See, I knew we could trust you. Yeah, this guy gets it. Mm. This guy gets it. I wouldn't have been surprised if you'd have just left that body out there for the dog to eat. I, I don't... In fact, that was not our mission. Maybe we later. Really need, we really need him booked because we're trying to save... Um, Horace. Horace's life. Who's Horace? Don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, it's Which a, way? It's Gustav's look, office is this way, right? We're, this we're, way? The yeah, uh, judge, whatever her name said, you're supposed to help us, so... Well, Go help. I'm, Judge Dareman. I'm, I'm yes. help. I'm just trying to figure out what I need to do here. Book him. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll look into booking him. For murder. And and then lock down the factory. Vorkstag and Grind's chem works. So do I need to send my men out there to investigate the factory? No. No, we'll take care of that. Just make sure nobody comes in and tampers with it. I think I can handle that. Thank you. We appreciate it. I'm sure you can. I'll send my best deputies over there. Excellent idea. Vivian gives him a bright smile. She says, like, thank you so much. You're welcome. There's donuts on the way up if you if you want that. Oh, I love way. donuts. Do you have any raspberry filled? Uh, I don't think so. There might be some rhubarb ones. Though. They're at- <gasps> rhubarb, it's even better. Oh my goodness! And Vivian runs off to go get a donut. And, and re- as she's running, Roderick's like, "Raspberries are out of season." <laughs> <laughs> That's why we don't have them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see that when he leveled up Roderick Holy, it's like, what? did you put an extra point in an obnoxious? <laughs> that's his knowledge. That's knowledge his nature. knowledge nature. God. It's coming into play. He's a profession farmer. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the far- farmer's almanac as he's reading it as he's going up the stairs. <laughs> see, I told you. Out of season. And it's going to rain tomorrow. <laughs> we crack us Followed up. Followed by Plague of Locusts, <laughs> which it- is happening. So. Anyway, so we were able to successfully log in all the evidence? Yes. Everything that you had. You Which I wish to God I could remember what it was. <laughs> we Do you remember? Yeah. Do you remember yeah, we actually should talk about that. So No. I don't either. So we've got we've got the skin eater. We've got his closet full of skin. You just can't get it right. It's a skin stealer. Whatever. You've called him everything but that the entire time. All right, the skin I think wheeler. Skinwalker. I think uh, skinwalker is a better term. That's anyway, a different but. thing. It's also probably copyrighted by Stephen King. Or no, there's a skinwalker in Pathfinder too. It's just not what he is. He's a uh, skin stealer. Okay, we got it's a skin a stealer. Thing. We got his stolen skin. We've got his the, tools. The tools and the bag for them. That we found in uh, Grind's room. Yeah, the alchemist's room. The potion of dark vision. Yes. Oh, I'm glad you remembered that one. Potion of dark vision. And then, I don't know if we want to bring it up in the trial, but there was the fact that the freaking gnome turned into a dark world dwarf. WTF. Roderick doesn't think that that's pertinent to the case. It is because he got the bite. No, that, no, that's no we're talking the about skin. the other guy. We're talking oh, about Grind. Oh, the skin monster. Oh, and, the, and one of the skins is specifically... Looks kind of like Horace Looks kind of like bit. Horus. But I don't, and I don't know how much it'll stand up. But Grind was also saying stuff about save their skin. We need it for later. I said that ours. Too. 
Ren- yeah. Renly said it too. Because we do need it for later. Well, I was. Uh, Renly has just been weird. <laughs> yeah. As is his want. Yes. Um, so we've got the surgical tools, the potion of dark vision, uh, the skinwalker himself, and all of the skin, skin stealer. <laughs> Burn. I'm so proud of you. You're learning. <laughs> Hero guard. No, I'll take Just it. Kidding. No, he said it. No, he said it. We, it's recorded. So the, the skin stealer and all of his suits. <laughs> um, and then we also have the testimony from Lasney, which, again, Gary, editing that episode. I love Lasney. He's great. I wish Lasney was traveling with us. <laughs> Uh, yeah. except, except he's uh, a witness for the prosecution. Yeah, well, no, we'll just as long as he says the same thing he said when he talked to us, then we're, we're fine. Yep. Are you not wanting to tell Gary what he said that we're going off of? Which is what? Which is that the uh, we're not talking to Lasney. But what? Uh, well, I think what we're just talking about is Lasney said that um, bite on the shoulder caused blood, blood pro- bleeding profusely, mm-hmm. and the, s- the skin stealer has a huge scar on his shoulder mm-hmm. and also bleeds. Horus yeah. does not and does not. Mm-hmm. And also has dark vision, so the potion. Wouldn't mm-hmm. need it. Yeah. Yep. So these yeah. are these are all things that you can present when it's your turn to present evidence. Yeah, yes. so so we had the physical evidence and then these are our arguments in combination with the evidence. Yes. Okay. So that's press play again. Going back in. We're <laughs> at the top of the stairs. Vivian is uh she's got a little bit of sugar on her on her face mm-hmm. from the uh, <laughs> from the donut. From the donut. And her hands are a little sticky. <laughs> She's like pulled a handkerchief and cleaning her hands like a raccoon. Mm-hmm. Roderick has managed to get glaze all over his beard, and it happens every single time, and he just can't help it. But now his beard is tasty. It's like every time he eats anything, he has to go run to the washroom to wash off. That is doesn't this, surprise me. Is this Roderick we're uh, talking about? Or uh, <laughs> Richard? Yes. <laughs> you should see me eat a burger. It's disgusting. I, I have. <laughs> I've, I've witnessed that. But, I mean, he doesn't always miss his mouth. No. I mean, <laughs> you know, Gary, we didn't need to bring that up. The fact that I, I can't do math and I can't put food in my mouth. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying I grew up in California with Carl's Jr. And if it doesn't get all over the place, it doesn't belong in your face. I want some Carl's Jr. This is a long walk down this hallway. Did we make it to Gustav's office? Yeah, you, you got lost a couple of times because you've only been here once. It is a courthouse um, and their signs are confusing. Yeah. Oh, his office got moved. <laughs> Oh, the swing's under construction. They're and repainting none of this mural. was noted on the <laughs> sign downstairs. Yeah. So you, you, you went to the, the office he was using, mm-hmm. but he's actually been moved into the the uh, defense chambers. Oh, okay. For, okay. In the courtroom itself. For other confusing things. I thought yeah. you were going to say storage closet. I really did. <laughs> well, no, that's where <laughs> he like sleeps. he's been downgraded Aww. again. <laughs> it, yeah, and y'all, y'all figured that out last time. He has a cot mm. uh, storage closet, mm-hmm. and that's where he sleeps. And mm. Roderick slept on his floor. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay, so he's in the defense chambers now. Yes. Uh, you make it in, you go through the courtroom. Lots of people are starting to gather at this point. Lots of the town folk up. Uh, the courtroom is set up. It's a big open chamber here. You've got the three seats up at the front for the three justices. There's like this chair surrounded by a cage in the center of the room. A couple of places for the different councils to sit and a few of the witnesses behind them. And then all of the, the uh, spectators are up on like a balcony level surrounding it. Um, so it's like courtroom meet Senate chambers Ugh. kind of thing. I'm nervous. Uh, As we're walking through Roderick's like, boy, I sure. I'm glad we got our evidence in time. We're cutting it close. Yeah. It's, they're, they're really excited to get this one going on time. Mm. Um, but you make it into the defense chambers uh, knock on the door. Gustav invites you in. Um, it, y- y- yes. Thank you for your help, Gustav. We have accomplished a lot since last night. Mm. G- glad you're back. Good. Uh, I trust you have seen all the evidence we submitted? Y- yes. Uh, our court assistant has brought a report. Good. Uh, Is it sufficient? Yes, it lists several of the items that you found. Good. We're feeling pretty confident. Good. Uh, I, Since none of you have been in a courtroom setting before, uh, I'm going to have her break down what to expect. Thank you very much. Uh, nice to meet you. What is your name? Um, my... My name is Karen. Um, Hi, Karen. Hello. Would you like to speak to the manager? <laughs> yes. That's why I have this haircut. <laughs> well, we already know what she looks like. Yes. <laughs> like your typical Karen. Yes. Yeah. Um, I just want to say that as this is happening, Vivian 
Um, I, I imagine she had like a, a, a small pack as we were going through these travels. Like she didn't have, you know, her full uh, camp. Her like, Birkin bag? Yeah. Oh, but, pack, but, I thought you were like a pack of wolves. Like, what are you talking no, about? <laughs> no, like bags. You know, she, she, didn't had, like have, a, she ran the streets with a specific group. It's the mean girls. <laughs> yeah. ba- but basically, while they're going through all this talking, she is uh, like changing her clothes and and putting her makeup and brushing her hair and getting all this goo and stuff off of her. She's getting ready to for the trial. Ready for court. Yeah, so vi- so after Viv- 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 Vivian's going to get herself dressed first. She's like the mom. Mm-hmm. She's going to get all her stuff or, or, you know, on an airplane with the uh, masks. She's going <laughs> to deal with herself first and then help the children. <laughs> <laughs> In certain respects, Vivian is the greatest among us all. Yes. And the, uh, the fun part is our friend Miguel uh, drew all of the courtroom looks yes. for us, which you yes. can find on our website. Yeah, if you've looked at the website, you may have seen so that. So solid. Yeah. I love mine. It was definitely, I asked, you know, he's like, what do you want? And I was like, well, I like sent him pictures of Legally Blonde, Elle Woods, and um, she's holding the, uh, the, the songbird of Shaylin. Nice. So it's just fabulous. So instead of the chihuahua, she's holding the songbird. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And for me, Miguel asked what I wanted, and I sent him a picture of Frederick Bastiat, and I said, do that. <laughs> so fab. And Renly straight up looks like Tom Hiddleston. Well, yeah, he yeah, does. Based on Loki. Yes. <laughs> and then the one big look like? And then Mariska Hargitay, she really comes yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. she really does. And Mariska Hargitay looks like Mariska Hargitay. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I've got... Uh, I can't... S- it's too small on my phone, but I have a, I have a shield. Yeah, yeah, you've got like almost like a, a detective's badge, but it's yeah. like your shield. It's my shield. It's really yeah. cute. A like little it. mini so, shield. Snaps to make It's Miguel. almost a buckler. It is, almost. <laughs> Not quite. Uh, but yeah, Miguel did a great job on those, so kudos to Miguel. Thank uh-huh. you, Miguel. Yay. Now, if only there the was. The boys a, are very dashing. If only there was a drawing of me somewhere on there. <laughs> You're the bird. You're everything, You're the Gary. Bird. <laughs> I'm the bird. Bird, bird, You're bird. An bird evil cloud. That just is over us. <laughs> and anyways, I'm anyways. sure that Karen. Yes. Karen. I got it. Karen. Karen. She's explaining what to do as we're all getting uh, uh, primped up. Zhuzhed. Yes. Uh, as you're getting zhuzhed up, she's going over what to expect once you go inside. Uh, like I said, you've walked through the courtroom, so you've seen what the layout kind of looks like. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she starts to explain um, what all will be in there. So the, the three chairs at the front will be for the three justices uh these are the three presiding uh, justices over the trial they will be the ones making the verdict so uh if you are delivering any of your evidence yourself and gustav is not please direct it toward the justices uh the three justices for this trial uh will be chief justice ambrose card uh he is an older very stern gentleman you also have judge casp aldair he is a very merciless and feared judge throughout all of Usulov. Uh, he was a former military general. And uh, I believe you know Judge Embrith Deramid. She is a magistrate. Another figure that will be in the courtroom will be the Holy Sister of Justice. Uh, she will be here to prevent that no magic is used during the trial. Hmm. Uh, at, mm. at all times, she will have detect magic going. Um, she also has the ability to cast comprehend languages and zone of truth if that is needed throughout the trial. Maybe I can ask her. Does, it, <laughs> does that mean Ca- Carrie's not allowed in the trial? Uh, she she would know what you're doing. You'd have to explain that that's what you were doing beforehand. Because is, is it magic? Yeah, it's a magic item that I use. Comes from his helmet. Mm-hmm. But um, also, I don't think that there's a reason for her to be there. But it does make Renly a little underprepared because now he's feeling, you know, how you were zhuzhing up everybody. Mm-hmm. He now feels underdressed because he can't do change. it magically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was he planning on being carried the whole time? No, he was just going to you know, have it as an option. Yeah. Put on I a would, different suit. I would think that you would, I would think that Renly would get over that pretty fast, though, because you're a, you love finding about, out about things, right? True. This is really your... No, absolutely. Your realm. He is of, psyched about this yeah. trial. He wants to see all these procedures. Well, I imagine Vivian might detect your hesitation, your nervousness mm-hmm. a little bit, and she would still come over and, and without thinking, would fluff him. It's like, you know, you look great. It's going to be awesome. It's, it's mm-hmm. excellent. Think about all the crazy things we're about to learn. But, yeah, no, there's that, that part. I mean, that's one of his drawbacks is doubt, so mm-hmm. he's got a self-esteem problem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um... 
holy sister of justice. Uh, you will recognize her. She will be the, the gray-robed priestess. Um, she is a cleric of Phrasma. I was going to say that, or Abadar. Yes, Phrasma. Um, another gentleman that will be in the courtroom will be the herald of the court. Um, he it will be clad in black half-plate armor with a full face visor. No one is to know his actual identity. Um, his job will be to announce any profound announcements. Uh, he will call the witnesses up, and he will keep order by striking the gong. Ooh, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> that poor gong. Yeah, I heard profane. Like at first, I wanted to read it as, or hear it as profane announcements. Like, <laughs> Could like, be those two. Someone has so, someone in the audience wants to say "fuck you," <laughs> and, then, and then there's sacred, and then sacred and then it's like keeps order by hitting people. <laughs> like that's really. My brain See, was going there. My brain but is, went- it, is it that true? Isn't that what they used to do? <laughs> would hit people? <laughs> oh, it's a long story, but it had to do with one of your brother's friends who uh, heard the story about that there were people in old-timey churches, you know, when you'd be in church. Almost like the church you used to go to, Rick, where you'd be in church all day, and people would go to sleep, mm. and there would be a guy with a with a stick. A mallet and a gong? Truncheon? No, like a really long one, like a like a pokety poke. Mm-hmm. You know? He'd bop you on the <laughs> Wake you up! Oh my, my mom goodness. just pinched me. See, yeah. and uh, and I, I think the I think the punchline of the joke for, with the kid was that his grandfather or something was was falling asleep somewhere, so he like hit him on the head with <laughs> <laughs> hit him on the head with a stick. Not nearly as funny to the grandfather as it was to everybody else. <laughs> See, my brain went somewhere else in yeah. Monster Hunter. Whenever you change the uh, room settings, there's an anime girl with a giant mallet. Uh, yeah, and she, and she uh, smacks the gong every time you change the settings, and mm-hmm, it's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what he does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, Except he doesn't not, look like an anime girl. It, no. Okay, and who else is there? Um, well, uh, one other thing to mention about uh, the Herald of the Court. He is also the protector of the justices, uh, mm-hmm. so he will also have a great sword in hand at all times. Is he? Does he function like a like a bailiff? Essentially. This is like the scariest courtroom ever. He's like a sergeant at arms. Sergeant at arms. Yeah, he can't see his face. Yeah. And He's more like an executioner. Yeah. Like that, that ebony black full plate armor as yeah. well. Oh, I, I picture it, it perfectly. Yeah. Ugh. I'm s- and there's a cage in the middle of it. I'm just so... I would... It's like, Roderick, you would look great in that outfit. <laughs> oh, in the cage or the outfit? Yes. Both. Level 13. And Level the, 13. And the outfit in the cage. Level 13 mm-hmm. go-go dancer. Uh-huh. Ah. <laughs> <clears throat> um, what is love? <laughs> Baby, don't, don't hurt, hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mo. <laughs> there's a reason no one in this party are lawyers. Um in the game. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, <laughs> in the span of a gnat. <laughs> <laughs> Required for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Including the GM. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so um, also in the courtroom will be, uh, there will be five elderly uh, bookish-looking clerks. They will be uh, recording everything that is said and done within the courtroom. Um, they in different all... languages? Why, why does it take so many of them? Uh, some will be for... Um, recording in different languages. Others will be for uh, evidence while some are writing down everything that is said. Uh, um, it's just different clerks with different duties. It's minority reported because there's it. a disagreement. Yes. <clears throat> also, I, you said duties. Yes, I did. Duty. Um, <laughs> I, I will say that the clerks do really like to hear themselves talk. So if you do speak to the clerks directly, um, they will use probably ten times more words than are necessary to say what they need to say. <laughs> so talk to them for all of next episode. Sure. What's an episode? <laughs> anyway. Um, so next up, you'll have the prosecution. Um, the appointed prosecutor for this case is Otto Heiger. Uh, he is a very well-educated and well-known legal counsel here in Ustalov, he has been known to kind of be somewhat biased. So biased towards the defense. Biased toward the um, he will stop at nothing to see uh, the beast burn. Oh my! So personality-wise, is he like Burger from Perry Mason, or is he like uh, the prosecution in um, my cousin Vinny, like old? Old time Southern Southern gent. He's definitely not the Southern gentleman. Uh-huh. He's very cocky, very arrogant. Young ish. He's young. He's probably just a little bit older than Roderick. Okay. 
So he's a Roderick. Yeah. <laughs> My huh. Cousin Vinny was such a good movie. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um, along with the prosecution, uh, there will be um, his trio of legal advisors as well that will sit with them. We do not know their names. Um, however, they will be there. Um, defense will take the other side of the the courtroom. Uh, so that will be uh, Barrister Gustav Koppel um, taking point and then the four of you. And who are our legal advisors? You are the legal advisors. Uh-huh. Th- there's like a There's like a silence in the room. We are doomed. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to sit next to the beast. Uh, the the beast will actually be in the um, the chair and the cage. Um, so he will be in the center of the courtroom for the entire trial. Can I stand near him? Uh, you will need to keep a distance from the beast himself. Um, you could stay by the, uh, the council table, um, which is somewhat near. You will be to the to the right of him. I'm a bodyguard. As an I'm example. his bodyguard. Oh, there we go. Yeah. In the courtroom. Oh, it, it. it looks like it looks like the this is the it's a weird comparison, but like a an, you know, when they like old timey like when they're doing like an autopsy. Uh huh. Like in a medical yeah, school. That's exactly a what theater. It looks like. a theater. An yeah, amphitheater. Theater. It's an amphitheater, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. exactly what it is, Noel. Good visualization. Yeah. Or like really? the United Nations. It really looks like um an amphitheater. I mm-hmm. think that's the best uh and the beast an just operating spotlighted theater spotlighted in the middle. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, you know what? It's also it's uh, Harry Potter in those trials. Yeah, yeah. It's like that. It's a lot like that, where you have like the balconies of people. You know what we're talking about, right, Richard? So. <laughs> <laughs> How about the scene in the Coneheads where they're on Remulac? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> so, and what is it? I what feel. is it? Snarfle the. Uh, God, what is the beast? Narthox. Narthox. Narthox, yeah. Narthox, uh, something like that. Yes, I was trying to remember what that was. I feel I got to get away. <laughs> it's very late, y'all. <laughs> I'm so glad yes. I'm editing out this episode. <laughs> so. Uh, what, it deserved an Academy Award. <laughs> <laughs> One of those good old movies from an SNL skit. Mm-hmm. A lot of things come from that. So, um, that will be... Um, the important people in the courtroom. Do you have any questions about the courtroom? What are we supposed to do? <laughs> uh, that, Vivian that, always with the poignant questions. That is a fair question. Uh, I guess I can give you an outline of how the day will go. I would really Excellent appreciate idea. that. And make it fast. We have so, like 30 minutes we, for this. We have, to, we have to go get coffee. <laughs> So the, the the trial will start in just a, a few moments. Um, we will start right at 10 a.m. Uh, they will bring the beast in. Um, they will more than likely shackle him to the iron chair that is in the center of the courtroom and uh, close him into that cage. Uh, at 10.10 uh, is the opening of the trial. Uh, the chief justice will uh, commence the proceedings by laying out the rules of the court uh, with a very lengthy speech. He likes to hear himself talk. <laughs> um, occasionally throughout this I, uh, more than likely the herald will get bored and just randomly strike the gong a few times <laughs> <laughs> I certainly hope he does <laughs> mm. um, uh, once the chief justice has uh, spoken um, at 10.30 it'll probably take about 20 minutes for him to speak um, at 10.30 uh, we will have the opening statement starting with the prosecution so uh, prosecutor Otto Heiger will outline his case um, give him a little bit of time for that uh, once he is finished with his opening statement it'll be time for the defense um, I don't mean to frighten you but honestly have you heard this man speak oh I, I was going to speak for oh, us okay good I, I, I don't know what I'm saying yet but you know I'm sure it'll be fine <laughs> you, you didn't see it on the podcast but uh, the the assistant here was giving a thumb to the uh, to Gustav. barrister yeah <laughs> Gustav who's in the room yeah, yeah who was in the room you didn't see it on camera but we saw Gary do it <laughs> camera also, what am I talking rude. about he no, he is a he's a brilliant brilliant barrister and uh, his his written work is fantastic. <laughs> Public speaking, not so much. Is he going to be writing notes for Vivian while he, we are doing this? Um, he might be able to do so. No, it'll be fine. I've, I've got, I've got this. I've got this. I've, I've got this. I've got I this. would just suggest if he has any anything that he wants Vivian to know, that he write it down. Don't worry, Vivian. If this Otto Heiger is the kind of person I think he is, I can help you out. It'll be a 
battle of wits. Battle of half wits. But I will have a. But I will uh, have a proxy, a much better looking proxy. Well, that's thank, probably. Thank you. Probably true. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Anyway. Also, Gustav's in the room, so we don't have to talk about him like he's not there. <laughs> no, no. Gustav seems like the self-aware type. <laughs> I, 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 I'm fully aware of my my capabilities. Well, don't let us fall astray and miss miss anything for him, okay? I, I, if there is anything that I need to make sure is said, either I will speak up or hand out a note. Okie dokie. We'll take you out for drinks once this is all over. Thank you. Um, so yes, that is um, that would be the opening statements. Um, at 11 a.m., so there'll be 30 minutes total for both sides to do their opening statements. At 11 a.m., uh, that is when the prosecution will call their witnesses. Um, I believe you have mentioned that you've spoken to one of their witnesses, uh, Mr. Lasney. Yes. Yes, um, so you will get a chance to... Um, cross-examine him uh, once he is questioned by the the prosecution, if you would like. Oh, we would. <laughs> um, after the prosecution calls their witnesses, uh, they, they do have a couple. Um, around 12.30, it'll be time for um, for us to call our witnesses. You mean when everybody's hungry? So yeah, we're skipping lunch. It'll be around 12.30 when we call witnesses, yes. It's after lunch. Um, well, we're, we'll only be going for a couple more hours, so everyone will have food after. Um, you don't know this crowd, do you? <laughs> uh, so yes, I'll bring snacks. <laughs> snacks are welcome in the courtroom. No apples. <laughs> uh, uh, nothing too loud and crunchy either. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, witnesses for the defense will be called at twelve thirty, and uh, by two p.m. Uh, the court will recess. Do uh, we have witnesses? If you don't have witnesses, this could, can just be a point where the four of you present. Your evidence. What if the witness is actually the guilty party? If you are able to get him approved by the prosecution as a witness and he can be brought in, then that is uh, a witness that you can call. So, surely we've talked. Have we not talked to Gustav at all? This is kind of the first <clears throat> of. Like we've been rushed yeah. timeline wise. As with most cases, evidence has to be passed between the defense and the prosecution mm-hmm. so you know what their evidence is and. Mm-hmm. and Vice versa. So, Gustav, have they approved the witness yet? Uh, we will f- find out uh, very soon if uh, the, the new witness is approved. Excellent. How, however, based on the bite mark evidence, even if he is not approved for this day we may be able to call him later. That's very good. We may be able to call him as evidence, if not a witness. His life, his unconscious body. Just look at the shoulder. Well, um, I believe what uh, uh, Barrister Koppel is trying to, to say is that um, as long as you're able to convince the, the justices that this bite mark is on his body, uh, you can bring him into the courtroom to show physically, or you can have a sketch artist in there to draw this bite mark on him. Obviously, it's better if he's here in person. I think we ought to make him put on the suit. No. Yeah. Yeah. No, the thanks. The suit fits. What is it they said for... It was the glove don't fit, you <laughs> must glove, acquit. Yeah, if, if the suit don't fit, you must acquit. <laughs> so if the suit does fit, you must not acquit. Correct. Which means the beast is You must dead. convict. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if the suit fits, you must convict the skin walker. Yes. Stealer. Eater. Whatever. No, you're right. In this case, it's if the suit fits, you must acquit the current defendant. Yes. <laughs> but what if it fits the beast, too? What if they are the same size? What, what if, if it's the it same person? Skin? What if it is his skin and they, they you just replaced it? So I've been looking for that. <laughs> 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 We're so stupid. Oh, it's such a gruesome thought. You have to... <sighs> Yeah. Okay. So anyway. So. So yes. Uh, sounds good. By two p.m., the court will recess, uh, and then you'll be able to run to the next town to the next for town. the. <laughs> oh man, we need to find a wizard to wizard us there. I could not be and a lawyer. Where? I could not be a lawyer in real life. Um, I think it's good. This I don't think very, they. I don't think they would make you do it all. In I don't three know, days. man. This is very much Perry Mason style of lawyering, like <sighs> going yeah, out and finding yeah. all the evidence in a day. In a day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Perry, Perry Mason could do it. We can too. He didn't even have magic. <laughs> well, we don't either. Well, look they at, don't look at NCIS. The NCIS gets DNA yeah, tests done reports. like yeah. a day. Yeah, why isn't NCIS finding the vaccine for coronavirus? I know, seriously. Would have done yeah. it in 24 seriously. hours. It's like in real life, it has to pass weight. like through seven different people's hands and through the mail and it gets mm-hmm. lost. And Super slow. Yeah. Mm. But anyway, uh, so after Karen. Um, Rockovich um, <laughs> gives you the rundown of the who will be in the courtroom and um, the timeline of the trial. So give you a few minutes to gather your things and prepare and uh, lead you out in the courtroom as the trial begins to start. Right at 10 a.m., like was mentioned, the beast is brought in. Um, he's very downtrodden and depressed. He's being led in chains mm. with like five or six guards leading him in. Uh, but he's not putting up a fight. Mm-hmm. He's just head down, solemnly walking. Uh, they sit him down in the chair in the center of the courtroom in this cage. They put all of these these heavy chains, very similar to like the chains that were on him in his cell. Mm-hmm. Um, so he hasn't had a lot of freedom to move around since mm-hmm. he's been here. Um, they chain him up. Uh, once they get him locked in and set the justices make their way into the courtroom you see judge Embreth Deramid, uh who you obviously recognize uh she's followed by judge casp alder he is a very stern like hard-lined jaw looking figure he looks like a military general he's a very imposing figure and then uh, the chief justice as mentioned he's very much a no-nonsense kind of guy you can tell that he's a man in his 80s he's got a very Commanding presence in the courtroom. This is Ambrose? Uh, th- yeah, this is Justice Ambrose Card. As he gets to his seat and stands there, he looks over to the herald of the court who strengths the gong. Bong! And we'll pick it up here next week. Ah. Can we replace him with an anime girl to hit the gong? No. no. The, he- the anime girl girl is his girlfriend. Can he wear the outfit? She just, he's really into gonging, so she's just-